been victims of sexual assault, and we're not naming the convicted rapist her brother because it would be too easy to figure out who she is. That judge's name, though, by the way, again, is William Follett. And one of the things that he said that also really stood out is he felt the defendant was sorry, Joey, and he noted the victim took off her own clothes and that she wasn't unconscious. How does a judge get away with saying this? And that's mind-blowing, Erica, and it's about, you know, it's like re-victimizing the victim in the case. And so here's what happens. You give judges a great deal of judicial discretion, and when you're meting out punishment, you consider three things, really, right? Punishment, deterrence, and rehabilitation, and that's what they factor in. And it raises a thorny question, not only as it relates to this case, but as it relates to every case, and that's how much discretion do we give our judges? On the one hand, you want to give judges discretion because those who use it well and wisely will know that every case is factually different. There's a human element to every case. However, when you don't have what's called a mandatory minimum, that is a legislatively imposed sentence which says you're going to jail, as you do now, by the way, as it relates to this, specific, this particular right. crime, it allows judges to do what they like within the bounds of discretion. But when you do things and you're factoring into something, it's, there's a lot that perplexes me about this. There's a probation report that says that this guy showed no remorse, was smug, etc. Judges are usually very persuaded by the probation report. So for a judge to really overturn that where it says don't give him probation, it just really boggles the mind. And then, Erica, final point, for what you just read. So you drug someone and they're able to take off their own clothes and that's a mitigating factor that should get you out of jail or not put you there to begin with? That's a problem, and it speaks to the larger issue that Sophie was mentioning. You brought up the California law, because we should point out, in the wake of Brock Turner and the outrage over that, there was a bill that passed. So now, in the state of California, prison sentences are mandatory for anyone who sexually assaults someone who's unconscious or intoxicated, but this happened before that law was passed. Is that law, do you think, Sophie, from what you're learning from the people that you're talking to on campuses, is that law changing anything? Is it being discussed? I mean, I think that... There are some concerns that, that folks have about mandatory minimum laws in general and how they you know, can disproportionately impact perpetrators of color. And so there has been discussion of that, uh, that you know, the criminal justice system or the criminal system has a lot of things that, that uh, people have been trying to reform. Um, however, we're not really having the conversation about what it is that survivors actually want. Mm -hmm. What is it that survivors are looking for? Well, it's validation that what happened was wrong. And so when you have a case like this where the judge is basically saying it doesn't matter what happened to you, that invalidates that person's experience and sends the message to the entire community and to the entire country that it doesn't matter what right. you went through. And so we have to look for solutions that take into consideration what the person needs to heal. And does she have any legal recourse here, Joey? The answer is no. A judge has basically, in that judicial discretion, said that this is what I'm going to do. And as long as the sentence is legal, you can impose it. You know, one thing quickly that I was struck by, even you remember the Brock Turner case that you started off with, the Stanford swimmer? That victim impact statement was compelling. It was strong. When you have a victim impact statement, that speaks above the court. It speaks to actually society in general. And in that case, it went viral. You know, and I think that that's where the focus needs to be, with the victim, the impact on the victim, the effect it has on the victim, on the victim's family. But for a judge to unilaterally use their discretion in a way like this, it just sends problems and shockwaves, and really it, it doesn't send the proper message that we should, Sophie, as a society, and as you've spoken to, be sent. Yeah, and it makes your skin crawl, too, I will say. Uh, Sophie, Joey, appreciate you both being with us. Thank you. All right. Thank you.